Rasulul Kareem, I'm very, very happy and pleased to tell you that uh, we have a, a, this brother. I've been like asking him to come and 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 talk to to me maybe for a year now. I think um, brother Abdul Latif. Um, he is very educated in the Islamic uh, traditional sciences, and he is very familiar with what is happening in the world. And one of the things that uh, he has been talking about uh, quite a lot, in fact, uh, is the very uh, high possibility uh, that uh, that the jal will come in some form of, you know, this being from the sky like UFOs or ET, um, for which we have a lot of predictive programming. Uh, and and so, uh, Brother Abdul Latif, I'll leave it in your hands from here. Um, if you can talk about this, especially to a lot of the brothers or sisters who may not be aware that, uh, okay, this is like kind of like being built up, especially with the recent news. Uh, I don't know if you heard, they said that some UFOs crashed in Brazil. Came across something. <clears throat> but um, the Ummah at large concerning extraterrestrial life and its existence. Now, this is something that, alhamdulillah, you know, to some extent, Islam does not renege, right? But there are other alims out there, subhanAllah, you know, and uh, no one's disputing that. Uh, whether um, on an intellectual level, um, if any other makhluk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would communicate with the son of Adam, that our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has not omitted. Subhanallah, he's been very clear about this. In fact, if we go through oral tradition, right, we understand that the only two makhluk that would engage the son of Adam, Ibn Adam, on an intellectual level, would be the malaika or the jinn. Mm -hmm. We understand that the malaika themselves, um, in terms of will. The jinn have their own will, right? And Ibn Adam, the son of Adam, also has his and her and daughter of Adam have their own will. And on an intellectual, on an intellectual level, level, these three, these three creations, creations, creations of Allah, Allah that would engage with engage during our during tenure, tenure in Alami Wujud, in the dunya, on earth, subhanAllah. Now, using that as a filter and a funnel, right? We have to appreciate if any other species, I mean, let's just, I'm going to go off on a tangent and let's just go back to, um, let's say the flavor of the hour is COVID-19. And um, uh, it's quite, it's quite a huge matter, subhanAllah, right? For the Ummah. Now, we understand that when it comes to something like this, which has such a drastic impact on lives globally, then there's the likelihood of the Prophet وسلم, having broached that topic and mentioned it on some level or the other, whether we have the ability to grasp that or not, whether we've been able to explore oral traditions to that extent, to be able to appreciate and understand and maybe perhaps um, deduce that this was maybe specifically referring to, subhanAllah, the COVID-19, that disease, <laughs> Um, on the Ummah or not, um, it would become clear, subhanAllah, that would be something through Basira, inshallah ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal those traditions to us. But the Prophet sallallahu hasn't omitted anything. So what we've come to understand is that he's been very clear in this sort of creations that would communicate with us and would not communicate with us. So if any other species, for that matter, which lived in another island, and this is very interesting because we're not just talking about the physical realm now. There's alami wujud, subhanAllah, which you and I exist in. And then there's alami jinn. And then wallahu alam how many other alams there are. Because, I mean, just because there's alami jinn and alami wujud, that doesn't necessarily discount the fact that maybe perhaps there are other alams. Right. right. And uh, even, in fact, I mean, this is a personal position that maybe perhaps a dajjal, is actually in another alam, a tertiary one. Mm. Mm. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. So um, uh, my position has been that there seems to be a very growing trend 
And I've kind of shied away, maybe perhaps publicly discussing this. You just broached the topic that, subhanAllah, uh, you have been trying to maybe reach out to me and uh, interview me on this topic. Um, I'm a recluse, subhanAllah. I'll come back to this. I just want to give you some background. Uh, I am a recluse, you know, alhamdulillah, and I shy away from uh, public um, appearances or anything of that sort. Um, but this, this subject matter is really important to me. It's close to my heart. It touched me. Um, I have been flirting with this subject matter for quite a while, but um, I had a dream five years ago. I won't discuss that dream at length, uh, but uh, in a nutshell, um, it, was in, uh, it was a dream that I had in Ramadan in 2016 on a Friday. It was mid Ramadan. And in that, uh, there were clear instructions that uh, whatever I had understood, I should make that known, subhanAllah. So what I did was, maybe perhaps I was a bit naive at the time, and I uh, started broaching that with people who are dear and near, but this is a fringe topic, subhanAllah, right? And um, it, I guess it caused a lot of awkwardness. And been, uh, I quickly uh, understood that maybe perhaps I was talking to the wrong individuals. So mm -hmm. I went straight to our, you know, our scholars, and um, uh, I've been making an effort since consistently and constantly, and you, you're certainly familiar with that, on a daily basis, and that's no exaggeration. Mm. That's what uh, trying to uh, alert our ulama ikram and impress on them that um, there seems to be a agenda to stage a false extraterrestrial contact. Mm. That agenda, um, I think, will segue into the appearance and of Israel onto the global stage. Now, uh, there's been a lot of talk about, uh, in fact, I guess what uh, academics maybe perhaps tout as being hubris uh, when you uh, discount the fact that there is the possibility of other life out there, subhanAllah. Mm -hmm. It seems that they are building us up to some sort of, of a contact, right? Uh, by extraterrestrial sentient beings. Now, why I feel this way and why I feel so strongly about this issue is that I believe it will be a fifth and that's going to be so overwhelming it will impact not just the three Abrahamic religions, which includes Islam, subhanAllah, but also um, the global, all global religions, as well as atheists and um, Humanity in general, subhanAllah. Um, there seems to be a, a lot of talk about collective consciousness, right? And um, being part of a one, right? A religion of love and a spiritual religion of the pineal gland, um, which interestingly enough has connections with what they aptly call the lizard brain. Hmm. Now, um, you find in a lot of this media as well, subhanAllah, actors and everywhere else, the one-eye symbolism. Mm -hmm. That basically goes back to, and it has its roots with, all the way back to, let's take biblical reference, because Islam, Islamically, our traditions haven't been clear about what exactly the tree, what the, if there was a fruit indeed on the tree or not. What we understand is, Nabi Adam and Islam and Ma'khawa were not to approach the tree. Mm -hmm. Whether they partook of a fruit or not, ate of an apple or not, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Mm. But all traditions are quite clear about this. And they, they claim it was an apple. Mm. And um, the, they call it the Amanita muscaria, which is a mushroom uh, which has a red surface and there's white spots on top of it. Right? And if you eat it, it's kind of psychedelic in nature. Oh, interesting, interesting. And the psychedelic in nature, hence why you've got the red apple and the white interior. Uh, to them, biting into the forbidden apple would give you the knowledge of good and evil. Mm. Okay? And we understand that Nabi Adam Ali Salam, his, um, he became aware of his nakedness, right? It's haya, right? After having approached this tree, Wallahu alam what he did, um, whether they ate of the fruit or not, subhanAllah. But this innocence seems to be, seems to have been, he, he seemed to have been robbed of that, subhanAllah, right? And um, you'll find that the tradition of this evil and good, these two forces, seem to be at the crux of what um, 
Freemasonry is about the fraternity. It's in Buddhism. It's in uh, many of the New Age religions. And this is what I'm coming to now. Is that the spiritual religion seems to be about the pineal gland, the third eye. Mm. Which is at the uh, apex of the 33rd vertebrae. Right? Mm. Which is the 33 degrees in masonry. Mm. But once you reach those degrees, then you activate this pineal gland, which gives you access. And this goes back to now Pharaoh. Right? where he claims to be and you find mm. the hats and the crowns that they wear, they have a snake at the top of it. Mm. At the top, literally in line with where the pineal gland is. Mm. Right? And uh, for them, it represents not only Iblis, but also the Sirius stars, I understand it from my studies. Mm. Again, if we go back to the Kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. Yeah. Subhanallah. 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 So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it very clear to us. Mm. But I'm the rub of the Sirius star. Mm. Now, if you go into and study uh, the New Age religions, they talk about a, a sentient beings called the Pleiades, Pleiadians, right? And they come from what is known traditionally, known cosmically as the seven stars, the seven sisters, sorry, right? Mm. The seven sisters, which is close to the Sirius star system. Mm. Now, Umar Farooq, when he wrote the Chit, right, to Darya Nil, the river Nile, Right, right. We were about to sacrifice a virgin girl to the river. And this is when the governor representing Islam, who was in Egypt and Misr, wrote to Umar Farooq that this is what they're about to do because mm. the, uh, the river had stopped ebbing and flowing, subhanAllah. Mm. And in that, they were going to sacrifice. If we study it further, you learn that they were going to sacrifice it to the Sirius star. Mm. These are Egyptians. And they were taking their religion from their ancient doctrines, mm -hmm. which Freemasons take their, a lot of their, glean a lot of their religious beliefs from Babylon, That's uh, right. Egypt. Egypt, so, yeah. yeah. And uh, in that, they, in Freemasonry as well, they believe in the apotheosis of man, man becoming God knows of Lemon mm. Again, it goes back to what you've got uh, is the statue uh, in Washington, D.C. It was it of... Um, um, the oh the I I know the the um pointing up and then down as above yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. again it comes to those two forces right mm -hmm. they're basically interrelating just like you've got transgenderism transhumanism mm -hmm. right and you've got even the image of Baphomet right which is the goat this is again representative of the dean that uh, um, Albert Pike refers to in his letter right. Mm -hmm which is a pure Luciferian religion, because you'll find on the goat of Baphomet, whilst he's pointing above and down, you'll find a moon and a sun that he's pointing to above and down. And then you'll find that he's got the body of a human, a humanoid body, but a face of a, uh, features of a goat on his mm. face. He's also got his half male and then half female, because he has breasts. Mm. And you've got what... Um, the staff of Hermes coming out from his nether regions mm. with snakes coiling, and at the top, you've got a sun symbolism mm. with reference to the two opposing sides. And what they believe is when you've got the two opposing sides, uh, and there's harmony between them, which is why you find masonry, they do charity as well as evil stuff that we can't even speak of. Mm. Right? They find that they get harmony from that, and the two opposites create the divine nose of Lemon Zalik. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it very clear in his kalam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates all things in pairs. Mm. So it's our Rabb who creates everything in pairs, right? And not uh, the opposite, but Iblis Lanutullah reverses that. That's very interesting. In a recent interview I was doing with Dr. Omar, and since he's studied a lot of this symbolism, he was talking about the same thing, Kabbalah, Jewish Kabbalah. Absolutely. Tries to combine these like you have to know the idea is from what I understood he was trying to say was you have to know the bad to know God right you have to experience both sides the good and the bad and and so and for us Islam subhanallah we make a very clear distinction between the male and the female there's no merging of the two subhanallah of course the masculine the man the male has a feminine aspect to him but once the if the feminine aspect overwhelms his masculine masculinity, then he ceases to have that balance that he requires to be a man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And the same applies to a female, a woman. If she becomes more um, masculine in nature, subhanAllah, she ceases to become uh, feminine. Mm. 
a feminine woman that she is, right? Subhanallah. So they, we need that balance has to be addressed. But in their beliefs and their doctrines, they actually basically merge the two, right? And do it the opposite, where the man becomes more effeminate and the female becomes more masculine. And for them, they believe that when you merge these two, right, you become you activate um, um, uh, that divinity in you, knows of So this. The central religion in the New Age uh, religious beliefs of these two opposing sides, which you've got the checkered board as well in Freemasonry, and that's what represents darkness and light, and uh, merging them to, and that activating mm. the third eye, the pineal gland. Mm. This eye will be the religion of a Dajjal when he comes. Now, going back to what we wanted to talk about, him claiming to be extraterrestrial, and why I believe this to be the case, subhanAllah, is again going back to the Egyptian doctrines where they worship the Sirius star. Right mm -hmm. now, to worship the Sirius star, right, there has to be some sort of relationship between the Sirius star and Alimi Wujud Earth. Right mm -hmm. um, now, Sirius star happens to be the brightest star within our night sky, mm -hmm. and this is one of the reasons why they uh, there's always been a tendency, like for example, the lion itself, the image the lion isn't Iblis, but it represents Iblis in their doctrines, and mm -hmm. you see. In the British Court of Arms, you'll see a lion with a crown on it. The crown actually represents, again, the pineal gland, the third eye, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, which is the religion, again, going back to the Garden of Eden, uh, by biting into this apple, you would become like gods. This is a biblical uh, version, right? That you would become like gods, because right. you will be good and evil, right? We yeah. go to, again, the checkered board, the black and white, uh, uh, chessboard or the checkered board in Freemasonry, that's their blueprint. Right, and um, in case uh, uh, people are not catching on, uh, this is a very famous, I would say, Freemason uh, symbol, the checkerboard, right? It's it's kind of like the, his red carpet, so to say. Yes, uh, their doctrine, it's basically the blueprint of their doctrine and uh, their beliefs. And um, you've also got in that, you've also got the uh, pillars of Jackin and Boaz, and those represent the sun and the moon again, right? And for them, they believe that these two uh, um, uh, pillars, which has a lot of symbolism with um, uh, stuff like um, what you had on September 11th happen with the two towers and the twin towers and the Jack and Boaz, there's a lot of symbolism in that. Uh, but I mean, again, I don't want to go off on a tangent. I'm just returning back to why uh, this individual would claim extraterrestrial origin is in our beliefs as well, subhanAllah. Uh, Islamically, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi was raised to the heavens, mm -hmm. right? And Christianity believe exactly the same. Yes. That he went on to the heavens. And what they also believe is he will return from the heavens. Yes. So if uh, we understand uh, Jewish faith, and this, we need to be quite clear about this, and so do our scholars need to understand this quite clearly as do the listeners for anyone who's not aware of this, is that under Jewish tradition, they believe that their Messiah is not going to be too dissimilar to how we believe Imam al-Mahdi will be, mm. right? Which is he will be human in nature, a mortal being, right? And not supernatural in any shape or form. Mm. And they will basically crown this individual. Wallahu alam, we'll just have to see, you know, a person, if I was a betting man, I think that uh, individual is going to be Jared Kushner. Because they believe he's going to be able to do things that other people, other individuals haven't been able to do. And it seems that he's made quite a lot of progress in the Arab world in terms mm -hmm. of um, bringing um, um, some sort of like um, normalizing relations between the Arab world and Israel. Uh, at least the Jewish faithful. He's playing quite a, a huge role in that and he's been quite successful, at least in the Gulf states. Mm -hmm. with, subhanAllah. Um, uh, and... Um, so, for, as I said, I want to be clear that uh, the Jews, they don't believe uh, in a, their messianic figure being supernatural in any shape or form. Um, so, I mean, um, what I understand is what's going to happen is there's going to be, there's quite a few, there's about 30, we were told, there's 30 smaller uh, Dajjals in our tradition, in our oral tradition. And um, I believe that quite a, quite a lot of them have come. Uh, and been, and there's few left. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, I believe Jared Kushner may very well be one of them. Um, uh, per perhaps I believe that Donald Trump may well be uh, one of them. Maybe perhaps uh, Obama, Prince William, and Prince Harry. Right? Mm -hmm. 
And these are, I think, are gonna, they're going to come along when the um, manufacturing plant, I believe this has begun as well, uh, during the um, eclipse the, um, in December that we had, the Ring of Fire eclipse. And I think there's one uh, ahead of us in June, uh, which I think started the seven years of tribulation. I think they're going to manufacture certain passages of the Bible in order to coerce and cajole the uh, Christian faithful into believing that this they're living in a time which will see the arrival of their Messiah. Mm. In that time, the Christian faithful will believe Jared Kushner or whoever else it is who's going to be the Messiah of the Jews to be their Antichrist. Mm. Right? Uh, and I think that they're manufacturing certain biblical passages to catapult the rest of the Ummah. And don't forget, the Christian faithful are a huge chunk of the Ummah itself. Right. right? larger number than Muslims are. Mm. And at least Lana Dalele, it's a harvest. He's made an oath to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will take the son of Adam into hellfire with her. Absolutely. So, brothers and sisters in humanity. But nonetheless, it seems that they've set the stage and got the wheel in motion in order to ensure that they can harvest these souls, right, from uh, uh, the truth, away from the truth, and into falsehood, and then take their souls during that time. After that, it seems that there's going to be, and there's a lot of technology available to them, uh, anti-gravitational systems, uh, which they seem to be using right now. And um, yeah, I mean, the Jal will represent the, I guess, the peak of science and magic, like coming together. And you won't be able to distinguish. They've got a quote that they say, um, when you've got technology that's advanced so much, you can't distinguish between that and magic. Mm. Uh, some truth to that, subhanAllah. If there was like, maybe perhaps we, uh, back in, uh, maybe a hundred years back, if someone showed us a technology, we'd look at it like it was magic. So stuff that we can do today. But, um, my concerns are that it, in academia, in mainstream media, in popular culture, um, uh, uh, even um, in terms of um, there seems to be a drive to push this whole extraterrestrial reality on the Ummah. Even like you'll find your governments, they've got a space force now. I think Trump's just uh, introduced a space force uh, for the United States. And mm -hmm. then this race to get onto the moon and then onto Mars and colonize it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Yeah, it's in uh, Surah al -Rahman. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, has uh, limited their ability, even jinn's ability, uh, to some extent, to so some degree, to maybe um, uh, breach the heavens and how far. You know, can... that's interesting because recently I was thinking about that they, the jinns might be using science now uh, and satellites now to breach that, uh, the, the, meaning they couldn't go up. So now they're using these satellites to actually listen into what they can listen into, into the frequencies that they can listen into and uh, use that to their advantage because they are not allowed to go personally like they were before. And uh, anyway, that, that thought did occur to me and I thought it was interesting. And, uh, you know, uh, 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 we used to say, Kunna naq'udu maqa'id al samri We would sit in the places where we can hear it. Now they have satellites, so they don't have to go up. Uh, if, if the technology is there, then they know how to manipulate it to their own advantage. And the possibility of not adversity, for sure. Um, it's a possibility of Allah, if they can and if they cannot. Um, uh, but um, uh. what I've, the conclusion I've come to is that um, uh, I think they're going full circle, um, as Chef Omar. Mm. Uh, atheism to creationism. I think mm. one the claim uh, is that, because I mean, you see from popular culture, there's a lot of, like, uh, let's say for the Kalka Aftar, and they made a movie about that, the Avatar. And in that movie, you've got an individual who comes from another planet. He's, uh, and um, his soul, his consciousness is transferred into another vessel, which looks like, mm. Allah, which looks like the indigenous species of that particular planet. And then mm. he reverses that planet and he becomes a messianic, uh, messianic figure for them, subhanAllah, on that planet, whilst they have the intentions of mining it. Now, uh, when you go back to traditions, now this is where it gets really interesting. Islamic traditions, subhanAllah. 
is we understand that Namrud was from Sumer, Babylon, right? And um, he also claimed to be God, right? Mm. A very interesting He also claimed to be God and so did Mahon, right? And then to Sumerian spy gods. And recently, even the Ministry of Culture of Iraq claimed that one of the pyramids from Suma was actually landing um, extraterrestrial um, ships. And he did this officially. I mean, uh, the stuff that we've talked about so far, I want your listeners to maybe score a line under and research mm. yourselves. You've got to look, you've got to etch out your own kind of, um, uh, you've got, well, you're going to have your own journey, but etch out your own, uh, or your own conclusions, subhanAllah, right? But study this stuff, draw a line underneath it. And um, you've got the Ministry of Culture there who claimed officially that um, uh, this pyramid that they've discovered was actually a landing base for extraterrestrial um, uh, intelligence sent mm. in. Mm. Go all the way back to um, the Sumerian sky gods, which they refer to today as the Anunnaki. Mm. Like these kind of um, um, lizard beings. And um, what's interesting is that you've got, on one hand, a species that's lizard like, and then you've got another species that's humanoid. And that species seems to be claiming that they come from the Sirius star system. And then you've got another species that's claiming to come from another uh, Zeta reticuli. That's mm. another. Now, this is stuff that it, 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 we're totally oblivious to this. Our mm. scholars are oblivious to this. Right, right, right. Yes. Absolutely oblivious to it, unfortunately. And um, uh, it's gaining a lot of momentum. There's a huge, huge um, uh, impetus and following for this new age spiritual religion. And they believe yeah. in messianic figures. The as well. largest books sold right now in bookstores are in the new age book section. Well, there you go. There you go. And unfortunately, we're totally oblivious to it. And we're not really addressing this. SubhanAllah, in terms of Tawheed, Rasalat, and armoring our Iman, because this, this is going to be a big problem. It's literally seeping in and creeping in, and not only is it creeping in with other religious denominations and their beliefs, and then them doing away with that, and going back to maybe perhaps, because all of them at the center of it, and now we're going to come back and this, with what we just discussed at the start, will start making sense, is they all believe in this collective consciousness, this meditation, going through the chakras, and then activating the pineal gland, the third eye. And uh, the gel, we understand, is going to have, and this is very interesting now, Kafa Ra written on his forehead. Mm -hmm. If you go and study, and uh, in fact, I understand, I believe Dr. Omar Zaid was the first person to maybe draw our attention to this. Uh, the eye of Ra, if you look at the... Um, the eyebrow on top, that actually makes the alphabet, the Arabic alphabet, Ra, Ra. And the eye with the dot in the middle, if you take the dot out and just put it on top, it makes Fa. Mm. And then you've got a straight, and then a, it goes down and it makes a curl. If you stand that up right, it's the letter Kaf. Mm. Which is, again, I'm not making it up, it's actually there for an individual to see. Yeah. Stuff. yeah. It's interesting that the eye of Ra is it represents um, Horus, mm. and Horus is the sun god, mm. and he's the child of Osiris and Isis. And Isis the other thing that Dr. Omer told me in one of the interviews that I thought was very interesting, the eye, right? He said that the the first, like you know how the Quran says, "Aba yeah. right? Uh, this this again to the Najm, right? So the Najm is also important in this regard that it has to do with Isra al Miraj, which is Jerusalem. Okay? So, I mean, this is where the Prophet went up, right? From Jerusalem. So, there are a lot of interesting connections. Uh, also, you might be interested in knowing that Surah Najm is connected to Surah al Isra or Surah al Bani Israel in a sense that these are the two surahs that talk about the ascension of the, of the Prophet. But the point that he made that was very interesting was that. He was saying that the, the first bow, so to say, the first part of the eye represents the other world. And then the second represents this world, meaning the eye. So people that show this are trying to show that we're connected to the unseen, right? 
But what they're not getting is that they're connected to the wrong unseen, not the correct one. Yeah. And the, the wrong unseen actually exists. And my concern is that uh, that alam, as uh, um, Ibn Adam falls short, uh, sh falls short of their responsibility, which is the khilafa. And when I'm referring to the khilafa, I'm referring to a, the delegated responsibility given to the son of Adam over creation, subhanAllah. And we're falling short of that. Of and course. the more zulm is increasing, it seems that that uh, alam is becoming more heavy, it's becoming more prominent, it's, it's basically becoming... Um, um, it's overwhelming our reality, and it seems that that reality may, in fact, cross over into ours. Because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has created a parla, uh, right, a veil between us and that reality. But that reality seems to be manifesting more and more as we fall further and further from grace, right? And when yeah. I say grace, I'm referring to again our khilafa, and that was given right. to us, which is a delegated responsibility to mm -hmm. the at large. Subhanallah. So the more zoom that increases. And the more uh, they, um, uh, it's like the injustice is breaking the barrier. Yes, right? absolutely, absolutely. And so, so when the injustice reaches its peak, and in that chaos, everyone's looking for a Messiah, and then here he comes. I have all your solutions, and I have everything for you, and I have food for you, and I have everything for you. Because uh, the Ummah itself will be traumatized mentally. And if you traumatize a ummah and make sure that they've suffered enough, then what you can do, and this is what they do in other um, uh, black ops, where they basically compartmentalize the mind by making the individual suffer mm. and traumatize that individual. And then they create a blank canvas. And in that blank canvas, then they can impress on them. They can coerce them. They can influence them. Right? You become that much more susceptible to that sort of influence. Mm -hmm. Now, they need to create that on mass, and what I understand is going to be, and when I refer to biblical passages earlier on that they're manufacturing, is going to be a World War Three, right? Mm. And this is malhama being referred to. Malhama, in, yes. This is this is this is a, going to be a manufactured war in which it's a controlled dialectic, as I see it. As I understand it, I think I believe sincerely that we are yatim with orphans as a ummah, and that we don't have the leadership. And I'm referring to now um, even the wazirs, the leaders of countries, subhanAllah, whomever they may be. For me, from where I'm sat, and this is my own personal position, and certainly everyone can disagree with it, is that all leaders are in one, any, one shape or form part of a controlled dialectic, or they are in a situation where they are basically um, unable uh, to do anything other than uh, told the official line. The official line I'm referring to is now the Shiatin in Insan Jen, mm. who claim themselves to be illuminated, right? Which again is, again, everything's in opposites. We know they're far from that, subhanAllah. And their illumination goes back to, again, that model of Baphomet, which has a torch on his forehead. He has a torch coming out, which is mm. the light. But if you see uh, the, the real. Um, um, uh, sketch of uh, Baphomet, and you study that, you find there's an owl inside that flame. And mm. the owl represents being all-seeing. Mm. This all-seeing eye is so important to them. And if you go back to World War Three, that they want to manufacture, Albert Pike wrote about it. He was a Grand Mason, a 33 Mason, and he talked about how they are going to uh, manufacture all three wars, which mm. will then see them finally uh, see the Muslims fight against the Christians. And uh, uh, then a traumatized ummah would look for a, uh, a, a deity to adore. And this is where I believe that Dajjal is going to be the, that religion of um, man, Nauzulam Zalik, being divine himself. And that they created, they were our gods, the indigenous species here, going back to creationism now. So full circle, they've done Darwinism, they've removed a huge, huge portion of the ummah from away from the truth, from Huck. Now they're ready to now coerce them back to creationism, but they will claim that the indige indigenous species that was here on the earth was the Homo erectus. And we, as advanced extraterrestrial beings, came to earth. And what we did, we spliced our gene with the genome of the Homo erectus and created Adam and Eve knows of the mm -hmm. And all this time, throughout the ages, 
we have been the hidden hand who have been guiding you and coercing you until you were fit and ready for your truth. Mm. This I is going to be the claim when uh, Dajjal comes and claims to be God himself. Mm. What they'll claim is going back to now that story of the avatar, right, and playing the role of an avatar where your consciousness enters a vessel, this is what they're selling to the public at large, by the way. I'm yeah. which oblivious about this. He will claim that the angels that knows uh, of again, a falsehood, a absolute, um, I need to be clear about this and I need the li listeners to understand this as well. If, if indeed, uh, if I am right, then the false claim, the false claim, and I'm going to repeat this again, the false claim is going to be that they were, the extraterrestrial sentient beings were actually, uh, they were what we understand to be the angels that came to uh, Maryam al -Islam. Right. They artificially, artificially inseminated her with a fetus. Mm. That fetus, then they, uh, as in, they will say that we basically placed the soul into it, mm -hmm. like a guitar. And then that particular um, child that was developing in the womb was destined to be what the Christian world knows to be. Uh, Jesus, what we understand to be Nabi Isa Islam, so they will draw Islam into this as well, subhanAllah. Mm. It was all, uh, it was us all along, we were the angels. Mm. Understand that Jah, when he comes, he's going to have jinn with him. Mm. Right, subhanAllah. Yes. So that alam is going to cross over to ours, and so is the alam that the Dajjal is in. Now, there's one thing that I disagree with one of our scholars, who's, subhanAllah, is a pioneer, and we've heard a lot of her, and, and I understand uh, you're also a great fan, just as much as I am. I've been following you maybe perhaps since uh, all the way back in 2006, or if not longer, subhanAllah. I've got a lot of love from him. I've uh, learned a lot from him, subhanAllah. Mm, yes, yes, yes. Point, uh, that he makes, and Allah, Allah, Allah knows best uh, whether I'm right or wrong, or whether he's Dhammat Burakat and right himself. Um, uh, is that uh, Dajjal is planning things from the veil, from the other side. I don't believe that, subhanAllah. Uh, my position is that if, uh, at least going back to what we understand when Tamim al-Dari went to him, he would not have the need to ask if a Dajjal had access to our realm and to Jinn. Then he would not have the need to ask Tamim al-Dari the question that he asked him. Mm. And have a person tied up and unable to influence anything in our reality. Mm. So, I understand that Iblis Lanatulale, his spiritual child is a Dajjal, and he, Iblis, is setting the stage mm. in our Jude, in our reality, with the assistance of Shayatin in ints in humanity, in mm. Insan, as well as Jim. Now they refer to themselves as um, um, uh, uh, well, they believe themselves to be illuminated. Um, uh, Brother Abdul Latif? Yes? Uh, your last uh, one minute uh, got cut off. The voice was not coming through. Uh, is your microphone okay? Okay, yeah, just stay right there and, and talk. <laughs> so, where was I? I've kind of lost my train of thought. Uh, just the last two minutes. So, uh, I think uh, the last thing I was able to hear you say was... Um, you talked about Maryam, and uh, then after that, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Um, just the last two minutes, inshallah, if you can just repeat. So, I believe that the claim is going to be, and during this time, when they traumatize the Ummah and um, manufacture what I understand to be the passages of Ezekiel 38 and 39, hmm. Revelation 12, which I believe the heir apparent to that particular passage of the Bible is going to be uh, the USA. Um, I believe that they're one of the great landslides uh, in, mentioned in uh, uh, our traditions. Uh, the three great landslides, the one in the West, the Arabian Peninsula, and the East, subhanAllah. I think the one in the West is, uh, the lion's share of that is going to happen in the States where the Cascadia subduction zone is. I think they're fracturing uh, and uh, undermining the integrity of the, the topography in that particular area using technologies that are already available to them. Mm. Uh, uh, casing point, uh, harp. Harp, um, yes. Absolutely. And yeah. uh, uh, they've already got weather manipulation technology, which I believe they're using in order to flood um, and liquefy certain areas of uh, the uh, soil um, uh, and again undermine the integrity of the, the soil on the inland. 
uh, in those particular areas, uh, causing it to slide and slip. Um, there seems to be, uh, going back to the alum that we were just discussing and how they may be perhaps, will perhaps, cross over to ours when they actually start this war. Mm. It may very well be a nuclear one, subhanAllah. And during this time, when this nuclear attack happens on a sovereign state, I believe and understand, is when they're going to stage this extraterrestrial contact as well, mm. right? Uh, to claim that uh, they are the intermediaries and um, they're here to kind of mitigate any further collateral damage between our disputes mm. on our Jude, and they were in fact our creators in the first instance. And this, I believe, is going to show and maybe perhaps lend into what they call, uh, at least this is a new uh, phenomena even in the Christian faithful, is what they refer to as the rapture. Right, right, and right. Enough that a jinn can certainly, I mean, look, the throne of uh, Bilkis was brought within uh, a blink of an eye, subhanAllah. So, I mean, uh, removing certain individuals, and I know of individuals, I mean, you personally, I'm sure you personally have, uh, have had personal experiences with jinn. I certainly have, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, to the extent where it's happened so frequently that now, even if it's at a distance, I can sense it, subhanAllah. Mm -hmm. And that fear doesn't exist in me at all. Alhamdulillah, from Alhamdulillah, it's, it's not doing mine, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the moment they sense that that fear isn't there as well. Right, right. right and you yeah. taqwa, the tahara, and you know, you're, you, you, you're in wudu, you're in the state, obviously, subhanAllah, you're not in a uh, napaq state. And um, um, uh, then uh, they, can't, they can't obviously um, um, harm you, subhanAllah, right? And um, we know what exactly and what to pray and how to pray and what to do and when not to do it, subhanAllah. Mm. These experiences for me, subhanAllah, have kind of opened up other realities, which I was um, certainly, again, you know, um, uh, well, look, until you don't have those experiences yourself, right, it's, it's almost like they're just um, um, folklore, right, subhanAllah. Yeah. <laughs> and when it happens to you, subhanAllah, and it's been like many, many years now, many, many years, subhanAllah, I've come to realize that that alum is real, it exists. And um, it seems and it's, it's active, probably, uh, very active, and it's active. And we are, yes, uh, far more. Um, I can't even. We can't even. It's something that we can't quantify. Mm. Um, uh, they are very. They they take their purpose and their mission very seriously. Unfortunately, we're sleepwalking through all of this. Mm -hmm. You know, the ummah is sleeping. We're comatose. Uh, we're lemmings. But they've created this kind of reality for us. You've got socialism. You got uh, capitalism, and so I mean, th there's always these dialectics, and they've always kept us in that. And until the ummah doesn't remove itself from that and take a look at things from a vantage point and stop being part of uh, what well, the pawns really, because I mean, Iblis seems to be playing a chessboard, and both sides he controls them, so right, he yeah, controls them. and we're falling for that, subhanAllah, right. And, yeah, and, and I think the, the, the proof of that in the empirical world uh, is simply that the banks fund both sides. <laughs> so, oh, you know. They hedge their bets, right? They hedge their bets on both sides and make sure, uh, where, well, uh, they get the result that they want, subhanAllah. And that's by infiltrating and making sure that they've got their implants. And so um, the Muslim leaders, the politicians, they're thinking of, okay, this is what China is thinking and this is what America is thinking, but they're not understanding that there's a bigger picture on top of that. You didn't and, get that. And, and the people with the suit and ties, they all look the same. They all look civilized human beings. It, there's no, you know, it's not like, you know, if you become religious, you have a dhati, you have a beard, right? Oh. So you can identify the religious from the non-religious. They all look the same. They all talk the same. But, you know, what's happening behind the scenes... It's, it's, uh, it's conditioning, institutionalized conditioning, and we've got this kind of cult... Uh, um, attitude towards everything. It seems that we all seem to claim that we are that. And, and, and see, the problem with uh, with with the the institutionalization of our ulama is that they're the, they are dependent upon the the people, the politicians, the for the information from which they they have their understanding. But since the understanding they're getting from the people is not correct, I'll give you a very good example of this. Because I come from the same tradition, you know, and so I struggle with this, but I'll give you a very good example. 
Maulana Mahmud al-Hassan, who I consider to be the mujaddid of the last century, rahmatullahi he said, he gave a fatwa that the interest money you get, go ahead, take that and pay the taxes of the British and whoever. Right. Meaning take the interest, the riba money, and pay it then back uh, the with that, okay? Later on, the ulama came and they said, no, 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 but what about all the benefits we get? So we can't use that to pay back the taxes. Mawlana uh, Mahmoud al-Hassan understood the money is being used for something bad. Because, so and so then he gave this fatwa. The ulama later that came, they didn't get it as well as he did. We're and so, in a dire situation in that, in that sense. Um, I mean, that's a topic altogether. That's another that's topic. That's a whole topic in itself, yes. You know, because... Uh, Again. And then the, the other way that uh, there, there are two things that uh, that happened that have uh, that I just want to add to to our conversation as we continue, inshallah, next time. Um, one is a statement of uh, of Dr. Omar Zaid on this issue, because I was I'm, as I, it's a question in my mind. You know, you have luminaries uh, like Sheikh Zakaria or, uh, you know, Mawlana Ashraf Ali Thani, rahmatullahi and others, uh, Mawlana uh, Madni, rahmatullahi And so what happened? And Umar Zaid, Dr. Umar Zaid said to me something that was very interesting, and that was that you're only going to get, I'm translating what he said to me, what I understood. You're only going to get kash based upon what you know. Smart. Meaning if you're, if, you're not, if you're not aware of this, angel is not going to give you information about a domain you don't even know anything about. So right? SubhanAllah. So Meaning, if you don't know about something, the angel's not going to tell you something about what you don't know about, right? He's only going to give you kash or some information in a domain that you have some, some, some knowledge. So you have your spirituality, Absolutely. but if your doors are not open, it's not going to come. No, not that was one. The other was uh, some, a statement Dr. Isra Ahmed has written about. In, in his, uh, who's his teacher of mine for a long time, uh, Dr. Isra Ahmed, he said that the role the ulama played, and I say this because to defend the ulama, the role the ulama played was the as, of the Ashab al -Kahab. Their role was not of, because when all of this came, right, the British Empire with their technology, with their knowledge, with their indoctrination, with, the, you know, their only way of dealing with that was, let's save our iman, let's save our text, let's close the doors of ijtihad, right? So that was like they were being ashab al -Kahab. You couldn't you, and you shouldn't expect from the ulama of this time anything more than the role of ashab al -Kahab in the sense that they couldn't do what Zulqarnain did, which is kind of like the opposite, right? فَأَتْبَعَ sababa, He followed the, the causes. And so in that sense, I think they did a good job because with everything that was out there, everything would have been destroyed, meaning the, even the tradition would have been destroyed. Okay. So they preserved that and, and they were good in that defensive position. So the, I, I take these three things, uh, the, the, the statements of uh, uh, Dr. Omar Zaid and Dr. Asr Ahmed, um, so, so anyway, that was just something for you to also think about. Of course, absolutely, absolutely. Um, no, they've, they've, alhamdulillah, I mean, we've, we've, we've got um, not just an eternal gratitude for our scholars and the sacrifices they've given to preserve the deen and make sure that the, the um, tradition continued, subhanAllah, our Islamic tradition, and it's been, that change still exists, alhamdulillah, to some degree or the other. Um, what's interesting, again, is going back to those like, everyone having the opinion that they are on Haq and those 72 sects that keep on being coined by everyone, subhanAllah. Sheikh, I'm just going to go off on a tangent, um, but I think it's important that it's mentioned, especially to listeners. Um, it was very interesting and it resonated with me, subhanAllah, really did, uh, it touched my heart. Um, the Sheikh said that, look, because um, he was asked, um, who is on the truth, subhanAllah. And he said that, We've, we understand there's going to be one sect out of the 73 that will be on, on the truth. One. Um, but because our thinking is quite mahdud, it's limited, we tend to think that that is literal in its sense. 
and the sheikh, what he said was superb. It was absolutely, so it really, really did um, um, uh, resonate with me. And what he said was, there are people who are in etidat, and you've got extremists in every sect. There are those who are, and then um, watered down and cavalier about their beliefs as well. And then you've got those who take the middle road, the, uh, the radical middle way, subhanAllah. Who are on Quran and Sunnah, right? I so, like the term radical middle way. Yes, subhanAllah. Now, yes. And they are on Quran and Sunnah, right? They are on Quran and Sunnah. And then you've got an element within that particular sect which is more extreme and more aggressive, right? Which is um, contrary to the teachings of the Prophet. Also. And uh, what we're taught, subhanAllah, what he said was how do we know that that sect isn't some people who are in, on the radical middle way of this particular sect, and then some from this, some from this, some from this, some from this, and so on, to make a sect which will be the rightly guided sect. Mm -hmm. So we're constantly walking on eggshells, and I, that resonated with me because that keeps you on fear and hope, which mm -hmm. are the things you need in order to advance further, subhanAllah. Mm -hmm. So um, you've got, you know, um, all these groups claiming that we are the ones. But subhanAllah, um, yet you see other individuals who may be from another school of thought, and yet you look at them and you think, subhanAllah, there's something about their aura, right? And uh, there's something that is very, very, mashallah, um, beautiful about them. You see nur on them, you know, you, you, you're you drawn to them, you're drawn to their approach, their attitude, and then... When they talk, subhanAllah, it's as though it resonates that, hold on, subhanAllah, this isn't contradictory. So long as it's not contra any belief that doesn't contradict Quran and Sunnah, doesn't contradict, right, Quran and Sunnah in any shape or form, is there for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to then judge over, right? And for mm, us, and turn around to different, subhanAllah, concerning it. You know, because we get that. I mean, let's just take the uh, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah and then within us, we have the Sunni and then we've got all these other denominations and everyone claiming that they're on the truth. I, I believe that that's not, you know, subhanAllah, that won't be the case. There'll be people within each sect, subhanAllah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how many out of those sects and which sect is included in this. Uh, they, they'll all themselves collectively will become that one sect, inshallah mm -hmm. So it, it's always on our toes, and we've yes. got... Surat al mustaqim is very wide, right? Subhanallah. And, and, so, yes, and, yes. And, and, and in that wide road, there's the middle road. Subhanallah, absolutely, absolutely. Right? And the only... And then uh, uh, the other way to understand it is, you know, farraqa yufarriku. Uh, farraqa means to break from the mainstream. Right. So the differences will always be there, but then there are those that actually leave the mainstream. They... Farraqa, you know, getting out of it's not the it's uh, it's uh, it's not Farqa then Farqa means Farqa means to break apart. So there will be groups that will break away from the mainstream, right? And I'll give you an example. Me and you, ide we identify ourselves with the tradition. We identify ourselves with the tradition, yet, yet. Uh, we uh, we may see things a little bit differently, but our identity is with the sunnah, Absolutely. right? So so we we haven't. It would be one thing if me and you said they're all bad. We're breaking away, and we actually break away from the ulama from the sunnah. That is the dangerous attitude. Absolutely, one hundred percent. In fact, there there are guides, right? So so that that's an example of. Of, of 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 you don't break away, you stay with the with the. Stay on Surat al Mustaqim. That's simple as, and that's yeah. And it's on the uh, guides for that. Oh, ulama kiram, subhanallah. Uh, 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 again, like I said, I mean, uh, there's a lot to be said about that discussion. We'll just we'll go back to this again. Um, so you've got these other psyops that are happening in tandem which is like gene editing. You've got Casper, you must have heard of that. And uh, the, the first clone they made was the sheep dolly, right? Mm -hmm. And that was, and uh, for Iblis, I mean, it's not, the timeline isn't linear. He's been making effort maybe perhaps in the last hundred years, century, 
uh, specifically on extraterrestrials, these beings existing, and then cloning on the other side in the scientific world. And then what we, uh, what I understand is going to be the take home from all of this is that they will claim, um, they will stage a false extraterrestrial contact, which will lend into what the Christian faithful believe in. Again, the rapture and that uh, Jesus went to the heavens and he'll return from and when it's weird, like I think it's called the chapter of Daniel, which talks about the coming back of Jesus, right? From the clouds, he will come back from the clouds. And then he's in a, you know, the Antichrist is going to use this language that will be uh, perceived by every religion to be, this is our language, kind of, you know? he'll Because it's very easy to do that. Uh, you know, it's easy to talk about Adam. It's easy to talk about Maryam. It's easy to talk about a lot of things. That everyone's gonna be like, "Oh, he's with us." Yeah, of course, absolutely. And and and. The heavens. Let's just say that they, they they use technology. They've got the holographic technology. It seems that they've got these anti gravitational propulsion systems. They will have the assistance of Jin as well, right? Mm. They spray our atmosphere with all sorts of um, um, what I guess is. Um, at least the mainstream call it chemtrails, uh, which mm. is barium, aluminum, and strontium. And those are particulates that basically can be used as projection screens mm. of our atmosphere. There's other, there's, there's multi- right, 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 yes, yes. For a lot of normal stuff, in, uh, as well as weather manipulation, but it also does, there's military papers on it, that it's used as a projection screen as well, and they can do that. So. Mm. It, uh, uh, what I understand, and they've used, they've done beta tests of that holographic technology in a lot of places, like China, where they saw floating cities in the sky, or mm. they saw some horse um, uh, literally flying in the sky, right? Mm. And uh, this seems to be that technology being used. And you've seen examples, I'm sure, of these children in a uh, sport uh, arena kind of um, setup. I think there was a basketball kind of arena within the school setting, and you saw uh, there's a whale coming out from. Literally, the ground and splashing, and it looks so real, subhanAllah. Mm-hmm. That holographic te- technology seems to be very real. And for the Christians, they believe that Jesus went to the heavens and he's going to come back from whence he went, right? So he's going to come from the heavens. Uh, at least um, that's how people conceive it. Um, my understanding is that they will claim that he came as an avatar, he was inseminated into the womb of uh, Mary Nose of Lemon Zalik, and then um, uh, he was then. Um, he grew amongst men as a man, but he was one of the ten. Hmm. Brother Abdul Latif, if you can come closer to the mic, inshallah. Sorry. So you've got you've got stuff like indoctrination from movies like Superman, where you've got this messianic figure who comes from another uh, planet and system, yeah, and he's a messianic yeah. figure yeah. over here, and yeah. has all the capabilities. He can fly. He's strong. He's powerful. Um, uh, so it seems that they've been doing it on a very subtle level. Yeah, and even Trump was made to comment on the uh, UFOs that the or- the the Air Force has been seeing. Slowly, you know. slowly, kind yeah. of like. Yeah, absolutely. And you've seen Obama being questioned about it, George Bush as well. And now you've got the British government who re- uh, released these files on UFOs. Uh, there seems to be a lot of incidents happening, even the Pentagon, by the way. Um, mm. And then the Navy, that these these uh, anti-gravitational systems, uh, UFOs, as they would call them, um, are flying and they've no, they don't know anything about it, right? Mm. Where they're from. Uh, whether it's uh, enemy technology or whether it's uh, come from another world. So they're planting that seed, subhanAllah. And then you've got all these popular, um, even uh, um, uh, actors to uh, pop artists coming out and saying that they've had extraterrestrial experiences, Mm -hmm. what they refer to as forgotten time, and they've been abducted. Mm -hmm. These beings are basically... Uh, watchers and they're watching us and uh, they've been around since the beginning of time and before that what's interesting again this lends into we understand that before ibn adam existed there right. were, jinns. There were yeah. Other, yeah and yeah. before jinns there seems to be other creation as well according to our tradition right yes. so there's been a secular uh, secular um um, um uh, and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destroyed these um uh, species um who have rebelled and replaced them with another 
it's been cyclical, right? What I, and we've been told in the Kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that these creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were more competent, more capable, were stronger, had more uh, abilities. And technologically, maybe perhaps they were more advanced as well, right? And uh, from what I understand, my, my, my personal beliefs are and contention is that they've uh, been unearthing these technologies and reverse engineering them, which probably belong to other um, nations who are far more competent than we are, right? Yeah. And uh, reverse engineer these technologies uh, and are using them on some level or the other. I think a combination of that with Alame Jin and these other holographic technologies, they may very well be able to do that. It's not inconceivable that they could stage a false extraterrestrial contact. And whilst we've been traumatized as a number through world war, a manufactured war through a controlled dialectic, and my personal contention, again, I mentioned Ezekiel 38 and 39 to you, that's relevant to a sham and what's happening in a sham, because according to Ezekiel 38 and 39, Turkey, Turkey, um, can you repeat yourself in the next last one minute? Sorry, <laughs> Subhanallah. Okay, so going back to um, again, um, Ezekiel thirty-eight, thirty-nine being manufactured. I understand that that's the central place for that is going to be a sham. And that uh, Turkey, uh, Persia, and Russia will be drawn into this with their lesser allies. Yes, this is exactly what you were saying, yes. Right. And um, uh, this is going to be manufactured. So, from how I see it, Putin, Erdogan, and Rouhani are all part of a control dialectic. Again, mm -hmm. how I mentioned that Iblis is at the top and he's controlling all opposing sides, the for and the against. So, mm -hmm. Israel and her allies, and then uh, their, their fours are all being controlled in order to ensure that the synthesis, which is you've got the thesis, the antithesis, and the synthesis, which is the outcome of that crash, mm. is going to be a great Israeli project. Mm. I think that time is when they start the seven years of tribulation, which refers to the pale horse right now, which I believe you're experiencing and so is the world um, right now being manufactured. And the pale horse is about um, uh, famine, disease, and war. War. Mm on the cusp, they're already conditioning us to expect a war between the United States and China, and then between Israel and her surrounding territory, the Arab world, uh, between um, Turkey, Iran, and, yes. and the, Iran and USA, and Iran then igniting uh, uh, a war, because they've said that if, USA, if they go to war with the USA, they will, um, without condition, attack Israel. And if mm. they do that, then that's going to draw in Turkey, I think this is going to be the means through which um, we may lose Constantinople, because uh, according to Ezekiel 38-39, um, uh, uh, although uh, Israel will suffer a lot of collateral damage, they will come out victorious over Russia, um, Turkey, Persia, and any other allies that are going to follow them. Mm. Right. And I think that's being built up right now with the King of jo uh, uh, King Abdullah of Jordan as well, whom I believe is a good part of the control dialectic as well. Right, of course, yes. You play kind of, um, 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 well, uh, right now he's the custodian of Alexa, mm -hmm. right? And he will claim to be that um, uh, a custodian as well. And I personally think he actually may be the Sufyan who's going to uh, attack um, uh, uh, um, our prince, the Mahdi, right? I personally think that he's going to be that because he's got a military background as well. Mm. Uh, he's supported a lot by uh, the West, subhanAllah. He's right. educated from the West as well. Um, I, I personally don't, you know, I mean, I'm very cautious with that individual, but then I'm cautious with all the leaders at the moment in our time. Eschatologically, what you'll understand is, at least for the three Abrahamic religions, we seem to be at a crossroad, and there seems to be a confluence of a lot of things that are happening which are ticking the boxes eschatologically for many of our traditions and their traditions as well. And, and I just mentioned, uh, going back to the pale horse again very quickly, because I know we've mentioned quite a lot of stuff here, and I'm hoping that the listeners are actually drawing a line in their all of the stuff, and maybe perhaps they're going to research it and study it a lot themselves in depth. Um, it refers to um, the, the famine and the war and um, f um, disease. I think the disease has already started with the coronavirus. The coronavirus, going back to the crown that we discussed, that's right. what corona means, the crown. Right. Right. And the crown 
again refers to the corona of the sun, mm. which is the outside rays of the sun. Which right. you, right. when your president or even Turkish uh, 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 the president Erdogan or any other president, they'll have a star behind their heads, which refers, uh, which is symbolic of a halo, and mm. that uh, references a a thirty third degree mason, someone who's ascended. Mm. Those and attained godhood, at least in symbolism I'm referring to. Well, right. Right. In right. symbolism, this is what it re references. When they say he's a saintly man with a ring on top, that's what it refers to, the crown. Right. So in the British um, uh, armor, courts of arms, you've got a um, unicorn with a horn coming out from the center, which refers to the third eye, the phallic symbol, and divinity. And you've mm. got the same uh, unicorn uh, uh, also refers to a deja. Mm. The Messiah. I mean, this is stuff that you need to study. But if you look it up, that is why uh, you find with the children right now it's quite ubiquitous. The unicorn, the toy, because mm. they know they've got a demographic targeted now, and this is the demographic they want to vaccinate. Mm. You've got the VMAP two gene, which basically removes your spiritual kind of um, inclinations, right? Subhanallah. These are studies that are done. Apparently, they've been done by the three-letter word. I don't know if we should mention it here or not, uh -huh. but. Uh, department of the government uh, uh, are developing it and have developed it and there's no reason why uh, they wouldn't want to administer that in their global plants uh, uh, en masse if it does in some way hinder our ability to be spiritually inclined at least our children because I mean that's who they seem to be targeting the other demographics are being killed by this because they're older right so it seems they're cleansing the earth from this generation and harvesting those souls because most unfortunately won't be on deen on Islam uh, when they, uh, they die and will be accountable for this because I mean uh, this is Iblis um, uh, remaining true to his oath to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he will harvest his souls I think at the end once they've done this through war and killed so many people through famine and disease and again there's a lot of uh, we understand in our traditions that two-thirds of the world's population will die Islamic traditions through famine war and disease so yes. I'm so I don't think this is the end of the coronavirus. In fact, I'm concerned that uh, there's going to be this second wave that we keep on touting, um, uh, which is going to be far more aggressive, incredibly more aggressive than what we've seen so far. I'll probably do. I think so, and yeah. I think that will have a double psychological effect because it's like just as things got better, boom. Imagine the you know, because so, you know, I don't know what Allah plans to do in all of this, but this is certainly seems their plan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, certainly the best of planners, but in their plan, and we can't say anything for what the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, uh, but what we can do is hazard against... Because I do think that uh, this coronavirus didn't give them the full results they were expecting. I think that it's been set up in place in order to again create that sort of fear, um, a psychologically condition everyone, so that we would then serve ourselves up for this vaccine. Hmm. I understand um, they will show um, that uh, the the actual virus has mutated. So the vaccine that all the world and every other country has been developing so far um, is obsolete uh, yeah. because, because the virus has uh, mutated. But then what I think is they, as a synthesis, they're going to offer the solution, which is going to be a nanotechnology vaccine. But once they give you that, I mean, there's right now that technology, again, these white papers exist. This hmm. is that we're just drawing out of the hand. There are actually white papers on nanotechnology, nanobots, being used in order to neutralize uh, toxic cells within the body as well as tumors. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to offer that as a one-size-fits-all viruses solution. And once they've got that in your bloodstream, then there are other technologies outside which they can use in order to then maybe perhaps um, make sure that you don't um, fall out of line and that you continue towing the official line. Uh, I think they're going to use quantum uh, chips in order to um, uh, track, and then there's a lot of surveillance that comes into that as well. And I think that uh, the children are unfortunately going to be the targets for that. Uh, and then others uh, amongst us and the Ummah who actually survive what they intend to visit on the Ummah uh, during this time before, uh, whilst they exact this trauma on us and the suffering before the arrival of a Dajjal. 
And I think when the Dajjal then comes, we will be that much more... I mean, you just imagine if all of this happens at once, and it's not inconceivable that uh, they haven't already got the wheels in motion to do this and achieve this, and the plans in place. And it seems like they have, and I'm referring to, again, now the Shiatin in Insan Jin. If they do this, then it will be very easy for them to stage a false extraterrestrial contact and then this messianic figure coming along and say that it was us all along, we were the hidden hand, we actually created you guys. Um, uh, splicing, because then you've got, they'll say, well, hold on, if you can uh, genetically uh, modify and create clones, what makes you think that you weren't yourselves created in the first instance? Right. You, technology. And why they're actually talking about this in some of these, uh, you know, in Netflix, there is um, a program called Ancient Something Something, I forget, but it, it, one of the programs I was watching was talking about this, is that you know, they they took our they made our genes basically, and 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 that there's proof that they came here and they left the genes, and you know this this whole thing is already there. They're already talking about it in that way. Hence, uh, the Jal will claim to be a god, right? And he will claim to be uh, 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 the makers of humanity, Subhanallah. Right? And um, uh, what's interesting here, what you've just mentioned right now, is that they made a law, Subhanahu wa Taala, the Creator, impersonal. So they will mm -hmm. say. There's a God that exists that created everything. But like throwing the dice, he just let everything to chance. And we uh, came into existence through this reality that was created. And we were your creators. But your God is impersonal and doesn't care for what you do, whether good or bad. You're here to experience your reality, your existence, and then you'll become part of a collective consciousness and you will ascend to your own divinity, and this seems to be what they're selling. And imagine how... By the way, the Mormons say the same thing. And well, a lot of Christian groups uh, have this idea. And I was talking to one Christian, and he's like, yeah, I'll become like Jesus. I'll become like Jesus, as in... You know, I'll be I'll be another human god, yes. and and this is out there. A lot of them think like this, and it's become very popular because of these movements that people now say uh, to other people, "You're God," or or or, or he's a god, uh, because of this concept that they have that a human being can bring his consciousness consciousness to that point, which then has to do with that perennial gland that you were talking about. Imagine, now it goes back to Firon, who claimed, right? I am God the highest. Now imagine the final insult, final insult uh, would be for man and everyone to claim that they are divine, they've got divinity within themselves, and they can ascend to becoming gods. Imagine that. There's one worshipping another god. Shir. <laughs> this is claiming you are God, right? And en masse. And this is what I personally believe that is going to be the religion, which is going to be quite seductive for people. And there is no hell, there is no heaven in the traditional sense, and that you aren't accountable other than to yourself, and you are here to experience evil necessitates, necessitates good, because in their beliefs, that was a lemon zalik, um, Iblis is a god, right? And he uh, knows of a lemon zalik, needs to, he needs to exist in order, knows of a lemon zalik, which uh, Albert Pike refers to as Adonai, uh, and Adonai uh, in their traditions is basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. And they believe that Iblis has to exist in order, and we know that Iblis is just one of many creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creations, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Wahid, and he's Tanha, and he does a, he's Mustaghni, he's independent of all his creation, right? But yet, this is, I, see, uh, I believe that this will be the final insult, right? Uh, uh, and uh, if humanity will be seduced by this. Hmm. Right? I don't have to. I'm not accountable anymore. Yeah? Yeah, that accountability is gone. Right? I can do as I please. And this is part of, central to their beliefs is thou shall do what thou wilt. Hmm, right, yes, yes. What, what did the nafs say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes, right. I am. I remember reading some New Age book which actually said that exact frame that you, the, the, that phrase that you just said. Yeah, you will do what you will. And the, 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 that's the religion of the New Age um, uh, spiritual kind of, uh, um, uh, uh, this New Age religion that's out there. And um, with that, um, they also, I mean, you'll see Prince Harry touting this whole I am, 
Yes. And what did what did the nafs say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he was removed out of hellfire? Well, first it was put it asked, who am I? And what did it uh, what was the response to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You yeah, are, I, I am I, I, I know, yeah, I am I. I am. And I am basically means 33 degrees, becoming God. Again, it's the apotheosis of man. Well, subhanAllah, that's an interesting connection. Outing that, that mm. I am in the Invictus Games. And the Invictus Games is about, uh, traditionally, it goes back to uh, gods fighting. Mm. They refer to themselves, to themselves as demigods. Can you hear? Yeah, I can hear you right now. Yes. Okay, so when 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 we're basically um um contributing uh, with our partners, our, our wives, so on, uh, we 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 pay we pay for protection from mm. and then we approach our, our wives in that sense. Uh, for them, they involve them, and they actually have them enter and possess their bodies, and because they believe them to be those of eleven Zalik gods, they believe that when their child is conceived, it's a it's half half human, half God. It's where Hercules and all the traditions come from. Or mm. y- you've got um, Europa, right? Which is named where the name Europe Europe comes from, which is a uh, a bull, interesting enough, because we know where the bull stands in terms of our tradition mm. and it worshipped in the time of Musa alayhi salam by them. Right. And you've got a bull that seduced uh, Europa, I mean, sorry, I, 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 and conceived a child, and that child was considered half god. Mm. They believe that they then would ascend, and this is where these bloodlines as well, and Canaanites and all of that comes from. Mm. But it's rebellion, and they do everything in reverse, invoking these individuals. So they mm. have their beliefs, they understand, and they know themselves. The Shayateen in Insan Jin know that a Dajjal isn't god. Again, we keep on thinking that they will worship. Uh, then uh, the Shiatin will worship at the Jalas God. No, they know that he is just calling the grim reaper of uh, souls for Jahannam. He's just there for his mission, right? And they will support him for that mission, right? But they themselves believe that they will become gods, right? And they are, or they've ascended to that kind of godhood, which again goes back to all these spiritual religions, Buddhism, you know, the dot in the middle in Hinduism, the seven chakras, this is what all those traditions go back to. Mm. And, Beings, I think, will claim that we revealed those traditions to different tribes and different nations uh, according to who they were and gave them their traditions. But now you're already, you are all collectively as a human race ready to find out what your truths were. We had to mitigate whilst you were uh, um, uh, going through this uh, this war in order to make sure you don't annihilate one another. Mm. And now you're ready to know your truth. And that is that, guess what? You know, we, we actually created you. We... Um, terraformed this planet we came to this planet we planted the seeds and you were those seeds and uh, in uh, biblical biblical tradition uh, uh, the eden garden of eden wasn't in the heavens they believe it was on earth right right, right. Yes, yes, right? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, and for us we we were clear that it wasn't on earth subhanallah in fact the uh, iblis fell from grace right uh, what's interesting is that uh, i believe that the claim and you see this in movies uh, subhanallah where they claim that other extraterrestrial beings came here. There's one called, um, it's not coming to me, but they were uh, extraterrestrial. Um, um, it's even a god uh, that they, they refer to as a god knows of Lemon Zalik. His name's not coming to me, but he's a light bearer, if mm. you can recall that. Um, anyway, that movie came out, and there was these huge beings who were humanoid. And apparently, it turns out that they, they were planting the seed that they came to her, right? And um, then we went to find out who these beings are and tried to follow them on their planet because they were going to destroy mm-hmm. the planet. Uh, uh, so there's there's a lot of this kind of effort towards extraterrestrial beings existing. And now it seems it's all coming together with these sites of UFOs, with uh, the government in USA and then other governments globally. You had orbs come down uh, in Israel uh, above the dome. It was covered by the mainstream media in the U.S., right. everywhere else, subhanAllah. Yeah. And then we've got our traditions, and they're trying to connect them. That Which I found very interesting, because, you know, there seems to be this, like, the jinns, they want this power, right? Yeah. 
And this is the place where the Prophet went to the Miraj. So there is a lot of power there. Just like uh, Samari, he took the Athar al Rasul, he took the traces of Jibrail and put it into that bull to make it into a godlike thing. And so now they're trying to dig and find this Athar al Rasul, meaning Jibrail, who was there. To, to create, you know, to do whatever that they're planning to do. But I think that these are all things interconnected. You Jesus, know, they're going to... SubhanAllah, our religion is... Uh, it's, 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 it really does uh, boggle the mind, SubhanAllah, how ajeeb and how holistically we have to look at things. And we've not even dipped our finger into the ocean yet, SubhanAllah. Yes. Well, we don't have the capacity to, but um, uh, we've limited ourselves and restricted ourselves so much that we've got a vantage point of an ant on a rug and we don't really appreciate the rich tapestry with which that rug was made, subhanAllah. Huh. That's it subhanallah. all makes sense. Yes. Right? Uh, from a vantage point, subhanAllah, we seem to be looking at these fibers and thinking, how am I going to surmount these? But there's a bigger picture in all of this and we've only got a fraction of the understanding of it all, subhanAllah. Yeah. You know, you know, inshallah, I think our, our prince is coming soon. And I think that they're about to start all of these um, biblical passages, um, and the three being um, you know, specifically for the USA's Revelation 12. I think they're going to manufacture it, and uh, you, uh, uh, the, the USA is going to suffer considerably from it. Uh, manufactured tsunamis I'm referring to and landslides. Mm. Um, uh, uh, I think there's going to be one. That's going to, uh, Revelation 12, you need to study it. It talks about a dragon a red dragon falling from the sky with its tail. I think that's going to be a, a asteroid or a comet in sense and creating some sort of cascading um, effect in terms of the oceans. But I think they're actually manufacturing this. Uh, they've got the 100 megaton nuclear warheads. Um, there's a canyon near uh, New York in the ocean called the Babylon Canyon, by the way, Shea oh, They've used that canyon in order to... Um, um, uh, um, use the nuclear warhead there and detonate it in order to create and manufacture. What happened in Malaysia, by the way, I think was a data, uh, the beta test for that technology. The oh, tsunami. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a real tsunami, uh, you know, that came from a uh, natural thing. I, I think it was actually manufactured using uh, uh, atomic technology below the mm -hmm. sea in order to create that tsunami, which is interesting because if that is the case, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a response with that one wahid masajid, which was standing. <laughs> if it, was, if it yeah. was, the shayateen who were doing this, subhanAllah, then it may have been a discussion, a conversation between our Rabb. In fact, uh, yeah, 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 that's right. Yes, that's right. SubhanAllah, that's right. And I think they're going to do that on a very colossal biblical level to the state soon. Um, in, uh, on the Californian side, as well as the side of New York. And I think that uh, this is going to happen when the peace plan... I think is I've heard so many dreams about New York from people, from, from Muslims, about things going wrong in New York. And this is not before 9-11. I'm talking about after 9-11. It does definitely seem like that New York will be hit by whatever it is. And, you know, uh, one of my sheikhs used to say... Uh, Dr. Israel used to say, coming events cast their shadows. So before the real event comes, there's always like a shadow that comes. Oh, and, 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 and so it seems like, you know, uh, New York was also hit most by COVID. Uh, you know, so it's like um, coming events cast their shadows. Oh. Allahu a'alam. But uh, um, which, this uh, may be a good place. One, one small thing, because uh, I really want to sleep. No, absolutely, yes. Which is, look, uh, with winter, because who knows, Allah SWT knows best if we get to talk again uh, after this. But um, um, for winter, I think that they're going to, uh, this um, uh, is going to come back more aggressively. I think the strains already exist. They've manufactured more aggressive strains, mutated mm. versions, and they will release it in a timed manner in certain areas and certain locations. I think the United States, they are going to uh, deliberately um, destroy that country. And um, uh, it's going to, uh, China is going to replace it on a global stage by design. We built it. Yeah, and, and if you look at the relationship between Israel and China right now, the Silk Road that they're building, it's blossoming. this is, I'm telling you, it's, it's well, such a backstabbing to the United States for everything the United States has ever done for Israel. They are like 
backstabbing. In the United States, it was always about the mission of Iblis, always. And the mission of Iblis is to basically, I mean, Israel is central to it, right? And, and, and America has to go through these problems in order to force the Jews in America to go back to Jerusalem. Absolutely, and they're creating these problems in order to make them uh, uh, migrate. And because they would never want to leave this country. <laughs> Not the way things were, at least. Uh, before COVID-19, or the way that they think will things will be after COVID-19, they'll never leave. But, you know, but America is going to be a big victim of, of this whole scenario. Vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc tablets. Zinc, yes. And maybe perhaps as a, um, um, a, a fallback, have um, uh, hydroxychloroquine tablets. Do not use them unless you start showing the symptoms. And if you do, then they're harmless enough. The malaria tablets, they've been around for 40 years. It's very interesting. There seems to be a drive by the media to disprove the, the um, effects of these tablets because I think they don't want everyone to use them on masks. Actually, really today I talked to one brother. He has his PhD on these malaria drugs. Right. Uh, uh, what's this drug that you just mentioned right now? Uh, right. Chloroquine. He has his PhD on that, and I'm going to see if I can get him on board and do, to do an interview. If it doesn't no, hurt his career. It's effective, uh, Chef Omar. It's been very effective. So the data suggests that it has been. I'm not saying use them. I'm saying that keep them just in case if you can yeah. solve them. And if you do show the uh, symptoms, despite having taken a vitamin C, vitamin D, and zinc tablets, which you need to boost up your immune systems ahead of winter, right, when it comes to the USA, as well as globally, whoever's listening globally as well. Mm -hmm. Winter, start taking it a month before that. Make sure your immune system has been topped up, right? Uh, inshallah. But if you do, despite it, start showing symptoms, then um, have as a backup uh, hydroxychloroquine and only take one tablet for three days only. So you're taking three tablets in total, and that's about it. There's, it's harmless, it's been used for 40 years, but for some reason, the mainstream are making a huge fuss about not using it, which is really ironic. And there seems to be these double standards because they're not using the same mentality when it comes to this vaccine that they're developing. Yeah. Double blind people test on yeah. them, right? And they've got the cost postulates as well, which they haven't done on this vaccine. They don't intend to. So mm. where does that kind of those standards go when it comes to, I mean, how, I mean, I'm, I've no idea how this works. It's such a double standard. If you just, uh, it's such a double standard. Oh, I mean, you're going to inject everyone in their bodies with something that's alien to their bodies, right? It, about, look, as far as I'm concerned, you get your immune. Uh, 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 I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, uh, in, in a natural way, the body itself has the ability to fight off, right? Uh, these kind of viruses. But in most instances, the child already gets um, that uh, strength of immunity, which is unfortunate because the mothers these days don't breastfeed their children as much or for as long as they should, which is a very, very unfortunate thing because the harm that they're doing to that child. And then we inject them with all manner of things. I mean, the mm. vaccine is another discussion. My concern right now for your, just before we go right now, is uh, just in case we don't get to talk again, is look, please just um, um, make sure you've got an inventory of vitamin C, vitamin D, and zinc, right? Okay, very good. Sure. If you can't source it, that's fine. But at the very least, have vitamin C, uh, D, and zinc uh, readily available, inshallah ta'ala, because I think they're going to manufacture a huge wave which is going to come back more aggressive with a mutated version, which will attack younger children. And I think the children, the plan is to separate them from their parents and quarantine them. And during this time, they'll probably vaccinate the children. And mm. uh, we'll know Alan, what's going to happen with the uh, older generation during this time. And then this lends into what you just said, the Jews migrating to their home country, because I think China and Russia together are going to attack um, uh, USA when it's on its knees and it's mm. more vulnerable. And I think all of that's about to happen. Again, going back to Ezekiel 38, 39, Revelation 12, and Isaiah 17.1. I mm. think the passages, uh, um, eschatologically, they are manufacturing, mm. right? The, to lull the Christian faithful into believing that they're living in the end times, the seven years of tribulation, their Messiah is nigh, uh, coming soon. So they'll be already primed, biblically already, to expect the arrival of their Messiah and during this time, this is when I think Jared Kushner will pop up as the Messiah of the Jews, and the Christians will say, aha, that's our Antichrist. Right, so yeah. Our 
we're expecting our Messiah now after the seven years of tribulation, so all this war and pandemonium will start, and disease and famine and everything else, which I think is being manufactured by the Shiatin in Sinjin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all, inshallah ta'ala. Grant us all like, um, guidance, you know, mashallah. And basir. Inshallah, mashallah, alhamdulillah. I really enjoyed this program. Uh, don't be a stranger, inshallah. Um, um, it's something you can do, but I'm very comfortable in your uh, company, uh, Sheikh Umar. Uh, subhanallah and um, um, if I return again if Allah wills I'll return again if not then this I guess uh, we've broached enough for everyone else to do their own research on this topic and make their own minds up inshallah yes, yes, okay. yeah. you know, thank you so much Jazakumullah khairan uh, Eid Mubarak um, yeah, I'm always I'm so dependent upon uh, you know your whatsapp uh, messages Allah, it's like one of the things I have to do every day is to look at what you have sent um, yeah. in all of this. So, thank you so much. Jazakumullah. As-salamu alaykum. Wa alaykum as-salamu alaykum.